And today, I know we have, ex we have exchanged quite some time during the campaign time. My entry into business is more spiritual. Today in Kenya, I have a six-month-old baby. When I leave the house in the morning, I ask myself, why would a Kenyan child wear second-hand clothes while a child from China or from UK or from USA wear new clothes? Why do we do that to our country and ourselves? That is why my entry into the business world as a doctor is spiritual. I do run an hospital in Eldred, where now, instead of us taking ourselves to seek treatment outside this country, I have been able to bring one Indian doctor who is a specialist to treat patients in Eldred, and having taken two other consultants to train in India so that they can do at least some specialized surgeries. In terms of the economy, this country loses 14 billion every year in terms of medical tourism outbound to other countries. And I'm indeed honored to be here today with the leaders of the business community. Mr. Chris Kirubi, who I have really admired the way he's done the business and his resilience. Mr. Jim Nambaro, who my first contact with the stock exchange, I bought shares in Uganda Clays in the Ugandan Stock Exchange. I'm indeed honored to be addressing you today and you being my chairman for Nairobi County. Thank you very much. The other question that we must ask ourselves as Kenyan and as business people and as the economy in this country, when we had the business forum in Nandi County, I met a young man. He's a registered engineer and he was running a bar. He was selling alcohol and food, which is a good, genuine business. But should we educate our young people to a level of an engineer, and then we let those people go and do those businesses? He was actually complaining that the county government, and Mr. Morewi is my witness here, was closing his business. And I remember Mureyu said, it is not the business that is bad. It is the people who partake and do it beyond the hours that are required by law. So his business had, has, uh, had been closed. And as a registered engineer, I asked myself, where is the local content in this country? We know we are awarding contracts to foreign companies. And we have our young men and women who are able to do it. The generation that is following me, I qualified from the university my first degree 15 years ago. And I remember that time as a doctor, it took me seven days to enter into the payroll of this country. As I stand today, we have Kenyan doctors and other professionals, teachers, and others who are jobless. So in the last 15 years, the opportunities that we are supposed to have had have disappeared into this thin air. And as a country, and I would really like to echo the sentiments of Chris Kirobi, we must relook really at ourselves from 1963, and we celebrated our Madaraka Day a few days ago, is approximately 56 years since independence. We gained independence, but we never gained economic independence. 
there has been too much talk about corruption. Would you want to tell me that the leaders that we have chosen from 1963 up to now have been corrupt? Do you want to tell me that is the reason? We are focusing our energy too much into what I call corruption economics instead of development economics. That young man from Nandi County who is an engineer, if he was given the opportunity, we would be able to create wealth within our country. And our CS is here. We need to focus our agenda in this country into development economics. I ask myself, why should, give you, why should we give monthly allowance of 2,000 shillings to, to our old people who are 70 years and above? It means the young people are not able to support their parents and their grandparents because they are jobless. That is why the government is coming with that program. As a chamber, Richard Ngatia, I have looked at the six-point pledge. We have a lot of work to do. We must liberate this country. As I sit down as an employer, every day, directly to my line, I get a minimum of five job requests on a daily basis that are coming to my phone. I do ask myself, the young people who are following us, we are almost in this country, have reached a point where we are going to explode. And that one is demonstrated by one member of the National Governing Council, and I really want to acknowledge him, Mr. Peter Kupebea. When I visited him, he runs an hotel which is 100 roomed in Busia. And he told me, across the border, a few meters, beer is selling at 80 shillings, while on the Kenyan side, it is selling at 100 and 20 shillings. It is indeed true that a farmer from Thika cannot understand why the price of eggs which are produced in Thika is much more expensive than the eggs which are produced in Uganda and transported up to Kenya. I know we are in East African community, but as a country as Kenya, we must really look at the cost of doing business in this country. And that is aptly captured in our six-point pledge of our chamber president, Mr. Richard Ngatia. As I come to my conclusion, Mr. Richard Ngatia, the job that we have been given upon today as the leaders of the business community in this country we need to carry it to the precision like what Jesus Christ did for three years. From the age of 30 years to 33 years. We have a huge, huge task ahead to see how we can, as business community, advocate for policies, laws, taxation regimes, so that when my six-month-old child grows up, doesn't have to wear the tumba clothes. Right. So that when we are opening a car assembly factory in Tika, it is not about an assembly factory. It is Chris Kirubi opening a car manufacturing plant in Tika. Those are the policies that we want to see as a country so that 70% of our young men who are unemployed can get an opportunity to lead, to live a good life in this country. 
with those submissions, I would like to appreciate because these campaigns have really been tedious. First is my family. I have two young boys who have known what is happening in this world. And every time when I left, they would tell me, your meetings are never stopping. When I leave for Nairobi, for Nairobi they would tell me, am I coming in the afternoon or in the evening? I know they have missed me, but for the sacrifices you have made, I would like to really congratulate my wife, Lynn Ashley, and my four children, Geoffrey, Emmanuel, Kiprop, and Lindsay. Secondly, I would, like to, I would like to appreciate my campaign secretariat. Tunasema chamber nini? Chamber machinani. Which is well captured in our sixth pledge of our chamber president, Mr. Richard Ngatia. I would like to appreciate my secretariat. We have moved around, the whole this, around this country. We have seen how the county chapters are. Today here, it's beautiful. We have 47 counties. But when we looked at our accounts, audited accounts, it was only two counties which had submitted. And it gives us a telling that we still have to bring the 45 counties into serious chamber activities. When I visited Mombasa and I engaged with them, actually they told me, as we are playing on a different league, we belong to another class. For the 45 counties, we shall visit Mombasa, we shall see how they are doing it, so that as a chamber and as a representation of the business community in this country, Mr. Abbas from Mombasa, the chair, will come and do benchmarking so that the 45 counties can play the league that you're playing, plus Nairobi County, where our former chairman, Mr. Richard Ngatia, who is now the chamber president, has done us proud. <laughs> Finally, as I close, I would like to appreciate my friends who contributed their time and resources to make sure that we traversed the whole country. I would like to sing out Mr. Kibisu, the chairman for Kakamega County, who, when he saw us running around, he told me that Tari, we believe in the manifesto of our chamber president and your pledge and your energy to assist him, and he contributed quite an amount to this campaign. As I come to close, I hope I'm going to get into your shoes. You've told me I have to be humble so that we can lead this chamber together for Richard Ngatia and for the witness of the congregation that is here that I'm, I will humble myself and I will serve under the leadership of Richard Ngatia. And finally, we had an unprecedented experience in these elections. And this goes to the members of the National Governing Council. In medicine, there's something called premature labor, where the baby is born before time. So when the baby was born, we knew the name. But there were others who were not yet born. It had not reached their time, so we went to the nursery. The experience we have had to campaign as chamber first vice president has been very difficult. For the members of the National Governing Council, I would say we need to relook 
at our constitution and pair in future the chamber president and the chamber vice president. And because we are from an electioneering process, we have to strike while the iron is hot. And I would like to see, so that we can have good and attract top cream business leaders to come to compete at the national level, we have to pair the president and the chamber vice president. Having looked at the constitution of the chamber m and &A, I'm the principal assistant of the chamber president. I cannot run a manifesto independently. We have to campaign together so that when we get into office, we will not ask ourselves questions. You, you are going on that direction, and me, I was going into this direction. And this is the direction that we are supposed to go to. We need to know that before the time of elections. With those few submissions, ladies and gentlemen, can we be upstanding to welcome our powerful Father, Chamber President, Mr. Richard Gatia Karibu Sana. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Chamber. To me, it seems a lifetime since the last time I met this gathering, which was the launch of my manifesto. And I'm happy to see you here today, very patient and uh, very bright uh, looking people. I think I would want to read a speech uh, because we have our members of the fourth estate and therefore uh, His Excellency, the President of Kenya, Uhuru Kenyatta, I want to appreciate you in absentia. And of course, for those who don't know, he is our patron. And therefore, I appreciate you. Uh, C.S. Eugene Wamalwa, uh, Minister Devolution and Assels. Friends from the Chamber, leaders from the Chamber of uh, Tanzania, Rwanda, Gujarat, Dr. Chris Kirubi, my good friend, honored guests, valued uh, leaders, members of the Chamber, members of the fourth estate. Of course, I want to acknowledge Mary Nyachai, who is a leader in uh, women in business. I would want to acknowledge Mrs. Kiprono Kitoni, who is present with us here today. Last but not least, I want to acknowledge my dear wife, Nancy Ngatia, who is present. I stand here today humbled by the task before us, grateful for the trust you have bestowed, mindful of the sacrifices borne by the leaders before me. I would like to thank the outgoing chamber president for his service to the chamber as well the generosity and cooperation he has shown throughout his term. Of course, the comfort I have is that as an immediate past president, he will continue to guide me on this journey. Never before has the business sector needed stronger representation. A clear and concise message must be heard above the clamor and noise of the social, political, and economic commentators out there. There is need to stop posturing, tough, protecting, start taking accountability and collaborating. In this respect, the Kenya Chamber of Commerce will engage with its social partners. Ladies and gentlemen, we are not afraid 
of robust debate and discussion. As a chamber, we are very aware what business needs to survive and grow in a stable environment. Clear policy and regulatory climate flexible enough to allow for innovation, but effective enough to ensure competition. The path to our economic and business growth will happen if we work alongside each other as a business community with the chamber. In this regard, we shall be flexible and agile enough to change our offerings and services to meet and guide the Kenyan business community to match the fast-changing global economy. We shall build on the excellent work of KNCCI under Kiprono for a new chamber where we work together to deliver services. My promise to the county chambers is to build and transform each county to ensure financial sustainability, robust business advocacy and engagement. We shall strengthen business at county and national level. The work has already begun, ladies and gentlemen, and has seen us offering infrastructure support in many counties, namely Kirinyaga, Masubit, Embu, Kiambu, West Pokot, Moranga, and many others. We have also received numerous support from donor partners and private sector. One, Equity Bank have committed to roll our financing uh, without collateral for the MSME in partnership with the Kenya National Chamber of Commerce and Industry. We recently made a submission to the Treasury for direct support to the Chamber and submitted our solutions on the advancement of the MSME sector. And I would want to tell you that one of the asks that we made was CO, uh, COO certificates uh, to be returned back to us by KRA. The other ask, of course, was to look at the cap of one million Kenyan shillings and above, which has really hurt businesses. Number three, Kenya School of Government has committed to offer training to all chamber leaders. So that is a good beginning. We are in discussion with the British Council on their impact investing program. Number five, donor partners have committed to capacity building programs, sustainability and corporate, gov uh, corporate governance training. So these are just a few that we have engaged with the uh, policy development unit, uh, unit team, which is headed by uh, Mr. Stephen Bogwa. Uh, I'm not sure whether Stephen is here. So thank you very much uh, with your team. We shall roll out numerous programs to support the chamber. I am committed to ensuring we have equitable distribution of resources across the board. This means far more work, commitment, and determination, but we shall ensure we are rich across to all counties and extend out to reach to our EAC neighbors, African chambers, and world chambers.